Good day, grade 11s. As you know, electricity is important in our everyday lives. Electricity provides us with light and heat energy and powers most of the conveniences of everyday life, from washing machines to cell phones. We are going to look at basic electric circuits so that we can understand how these appliances work. Let's do a quick revision on what you learned last year. We will start with a basic circuit. This circuit consists of a single cell, an ammeter, and a resistor connected in series. The cell provides the energy for the circuit. Chemical energy from the cell is converted to the electrical energy in the circuit. This energy causes the electrons in the conducting wire to move around in a closed circuit. The movement of negatively charged electrons is called current. However, for charge to flow, there needs to be a potential difference between two points. In a circuit, charge moves from a point of high potential energy to a point of low potential energy. Here, you can see that there is what we call a sea of delocalized electrons in the metal conductor. These electrons are free to move between the atoms. When a circuit is completed and there is a potential difference, the negative electrons in the circuit are attracted to the positive end of the battery and the charge moves around the circuit. This flow of charge is current. The former definition of electric current is an electric current is the rate of flow of electric charge. The current depends on the amount of charge that passes a particular point as well as the time it takes to move past that point. Scientists today know that current is the flow of electrons from the negative end of the battery to the positive around a closed circuit. This is what we call current flow. However, in all our calculations, we will use what is called conventional current. And in order to understand this, we need to look at a bit of history. The first person to investigate electric current was Michael Faraday during the early 19th century. He carried out many experiments using the newly designed cells made by Luigi Galvani and Alessandro Volta, and he wrote scientific papers describing his findings. When Faraday experimented with the cells created by Galvani and Volta, no one really knew in which direction the electrical charges flowed. It became the convention or the accepted way to regard electrical current as the flow of positive charge from the positive terminal of the cell to the negative terminal. We still use the conventional direction when marking currents on circuit diagrams. We adopt this convention to honor the work of the great Michael Faraday. You have to learn the direction of conventional flow. So please make sure that you write it down. The direction of electric current is the direction of flow of positive charge through a conductor. Note that the electric current is given the symbol capital I. Capital I always implies that the direction of the current is in the direction of flow of positive charge. We measure electric current with an instrument called an ammeter. The unit of current is the ampere, which has a symbol, capital A. So if the ammeter reads 1 ampere, that means that the current at that point in the circuit is equal to 1 ampere. Charge is measured in coulombs, so therefore 1 ampere is equal to 1 coulomb per second. We can represent this in an equation where I equals Q divided by T. I is current in amperes, Q is charge measured in coulombs, and T is time measured in seconds. Earlier we mentioned that current would not flow unless there is a potential difference between two points on the circuit. Let's make sure we know what this means. The concept of potential difference deals with how much energy is being transferred per unit charge as the charge moves around the circuit. Now did you get that? Think about it for a moment. As the unit charge passes through the circuit, it is doing work. In other words, energy is being transferred. Now let's define potential difference. The potential difference between two points in a circuit is the amount of energy transferred per unit positive charge. V is equal to W over Q, where W is equal to the amount of energy transferred, which is measured in joules, Q is the amount of charge that passes through and measured in coulombs, and V is the potential difference, which is measured in volts. Potential difference between two points in an electrical circuit 
is measured using a voltmeter. A voltmeter is connected across the light bulb. Its positive terminal is connected to the positive terminal of the battery and the negative terminal connected to the negative terminal of the battery. This is different to the ammeter. The ammeter measures the flow of electrical charge and is connected in series in the electrical circuit. The voltmeter, on the other hand, measures potential difference and is connected across the light bulb in parallel. Now, the last component of the circuit that we need to discuss is resistance. Resistance is anything that causes opposition to the flow of electrical charge around a circuit. The higher the resistance of a conductor, the harder it is for the electrical charges to push through. George Ohm was the first person to investigate resistance within electric circuits and for this reason we use the Ohm as the measure of resistance. The Greek letter Omega is used as a symbol for the Ohm. When we measure a cell's potential energy we use a voltmeter. This measurement shows the maximum amount of energy that the cell can supply. This maximum amount of energy that the cell can supply is called the EMF of the cell. However, the cell itself has resistance. So when the cell is connected into a circuit, some of the cell's energy is used to move around the charges through the cell, and there is less energy available to the circuit. The remaining energy available to the circuit is called terminal potential difference. It is measured in volts. Let's summarize. EMF is the maximum amount of energy a cell can provide. Terminal potential difference is the actual energy available to the circuit. EMF and terminal potential difference are measured in volts. Now, the final part of our revision is to look at the difference between series and parallel circuits. A series circuit is one in which the current moves in the circuit through all the components, one after the other. We have learned in grade 10 that the current remains the same throughout the series circuit, the potential difference divides over the resistors in series, and the potential difference across all the resistors in series is equal to the potential difference across each individual resistor. If we look back at the circuit, we see that A total, that is the total current, is the same throughout the circuit. We also know that resistors in series are potential dividers. That means that V1 plus V2 is equal to V total. Finally, the total resistance in a series circuit is the sum of all the resistors in the circuit. That means that R1 plus R2 equals R total. Now let's look at a parallel circuit. The difference between a series circuit and a parallel circuit is the way in which the components are connected. In a parallel circuit, there are several paths for the electric current to pass through. Look at this animation. In a series circuit, all the electrons flowed through the components in order. In a parallel circuit, the electrons flow through both the resistor and the light bulb in parallel all at the same time. Do you see that some of the electrons go through the resistor and some go through the light bulb? At point A, the total current splits up and takes different paths before the circuit joins back together again at point B. Therefore, we say that resistors in parallel are current dividers. Now, what we know from grade 10 is that current divides up in a parallel circuit. The current in the main circuit, that is from the battery, is equal to the sum of the current through the branches of the circuit. In this parallel circuit, A1 plus A2 equals A total. We also know that the potential difference across the parallel branches is the same. We have also learned in grade 10 that the greater the number of resistors in parallel, the smaller the resistance. This can be expressed as 1 over R effective is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, where R1 and R2 are the values of the resistors in the parallel combination. We have now revised the grade 10 work on circuits. Next time, we will learn about Ohm's law and how potential difference, current, and resistance are related within a circuit. Grade 11s, you will find more information about electric circuits at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. 
Remember to try some of the questions in the task video. Goodbye.